In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Jamila server on the Google Cloud platform. There are many ways you can set up a Jamila server, and there are several hosting providers you can use if you want a reliable hosting solution. Of course, you can run the Jamila server from your local machine, but in our experience, the performance of a hosted server is typically far more reliable than a server running on a residential internet connection. And of course, your mileage may vary. So this video is a quick start guide to get you set up on the Google Cloud platform in about five to 10 minutes. The video is intended as a rough visual guide through the Google Cloud console parts of the instructions, but the important commands that you need to run to install Jamulus on the server are in the description below. Uh, we'll try to keep the instructions in the description up to date, but if something doesn't seem to work or is out of date, please do leave a comment and we'll try to fix it. So here are the steps involved in setting up the Jamla server. As a prerequisite, you're going to need to create a Google Cloud Platform account. That's sort of one-off event. Then you need to create a VM, a virtual machine instance for the Jamla server. And this is something we do in the Google Cloud Platform console. And then we'll have to add port forwarding. And again, this is an important detail that you have to do in the Google Cloud Platform console. Then, once the VM is up and running, we'll jump into the virtual machine's command line interface and run a bunch of commands to actually compile and run the Jamulus server. So for this, you're going to need a Google Cloud account. If you are setting it up for the first time, Google is giving away some starting credit, which should go a significant way in running the server. And there's also a freebie tier, which should be enough to run the Jamila server. But that's a detail I'm going to leave for another time. Once your dashboard is ready, it's time to create a new uh, virtual machine, a VM instance. And throughout this video, we'll make sure to make choices that make it easy to install the Jamila server and the port forwarding that's required for the server to function. So to begin with, we want to choose a server location that is physically close to us, or at least internet-wise close to us, which is usually correlated with being physically close to us. And here you have a choice of server sizes, and I'm selecting F1 Micro First of all, because that is in the freebie tier, but also because I just want to show that it works on the smallest possible server. The important thing we have to choose here is to tag our network interface, which is going to be very helpful later on when we set up the port forwarding, and to enable port forwarding. Actually, I'm not 100% sure what the role of the port forwarding toggle here is, but just to be sure, I'm enabling it. Once all that's done, all the other defaults are essentially fine. And this will create a Linux server with an internal IP and an external IP that we're going to install the Jamila server on. But before we install the server, we're going to go to the network interface and enable the port forwarding for the Jamila UDP port. On our freshly started VM, we're going to click on the network interface. So in the firewall rules, I'm going to go and create a new firewall rule. This is going to be our Jamulus server firewall rule. And this is where having named our, or tagged, I should say, our network interface is going to come in handy. Here we specify the target tag, so any instance with Jamulus on it will receive this forwarding rule. The IP range is 0000, slash 0, so basically all interfaces. And for Jamulus specifically, 
we want to enable the default UDP port 22124. All right, so having started our instance, set up the firewall, we can now go and log on. And the easiest way is just to click the SSH in a tab feature. This will connect to the server and put you in front of a prompt. So at this point, there are a whole bunch of things we need to install. The easiest is to follow the instructions in the description. When copying the commands from the description below, it's important that you execute them one line at a time. That is to say, copy a line, paste it in, execute it, wait for it to finish executing, doing whatever it needs to do, which can take no time at all or several minutes, and only then copy and paste the next line. I've cut out a bunch of time it takes to download the development tools and to compile Jamulus. Uh, but in general, even on this weakest of servers, it only takes something like five minutes. On some of the beefier servers, like the standard server, not the microserver, it's uh, even shorter than that. In the screen recording, I'm showing how to get the repo from the CVS server, but actually at the moment I think the Git repository is more active, so I recommend using that and the instructions in the description will be cloning the git repo. Since the software is being actively developed, there is a small chance that the compilation step will fail. But don't be disheartened. This is usually a temporary error that gets fixed quickly. Once it's compiled, we can immediately run it and connect to it from our machine. If the firewall rules were set up correctly, we will see in the logs that the client has connected successfully. So at this point, I'm going to start the server with a command line, which again is best copied from below. And if you want to make the server into a service, there are instructions for that too. I'm going to copy the external IP, copy it to the clipboard, switch over to my Mac client, and immediately connect to the server. Hey presto, we're connected. So one more thing we can do is check the health of our server by going back to the instance and clicking on the info panel. Here we can see the effect of my recent connection on the CPU and network bandwidth.